guys, it's the next day um, from the last clip I filmed. Um, it's currently 12.41. Um, I've been putting off starting this book for basically the whole day, even though it's such a long book. virgins till the end but i think this book is going to be five stars uh, uh, this book is like very thick i don't know how many pages the other one was this one's like 700 pages it's like a 700 page book and the other one actually let me check uh How many pages was the last one? The last one was 656 pages. So it wasn't that many pages. It was... It was... This was, this was, like, only a little bit bigger. But, yeah. I'm very sad that I've only got two books in this series. But then I also keep thinking that this isn't the only Sergio Mass series that's, like, you know, around. Once I finish this series, I can read the Throne of Glass and start the Throne of Glass series. And then I can go on to the house... Crescent City series. People people say that you should start with the Court of Thorns and Roses to like ease yourself in, then go for the Throne of Glass, which is a much longer series, and then go for the Crescent City, which I think is I think the Crescent City is like a longest book. So those books are huge, but yeah, I will now be starting because I've just been, I honestly just been bored all day. I've been very bored because I just want to read this, uh, and I've been just putting it off. But I don't think I can put it off anymore. I think I just want to read. I'm so excited. I'm really excited. I might put a playlist or something to get myself really into the mood. But we'll see. The maid from the first two books, uh, Alice, she's so sweet. Basically, um, she knows that she wasn't faking and that Resand didn't treat her wrong and that She's basically pretending and that she's like got a plan and stuff. Um because she's there the day that she was taken by Moore. Um and she says they say that you came back different, came back wrong. I never bothered to tell them. I think you came back right. Came back right at last. And I was like ah, that's so sweet. So she knows basically but she's like not gonna tell anyone. She's like, do whatever you want. 
she's not going to tell anyone. Um, I'm on chapter 3. Well, I'm actually on chapter 4 now. So, yeah. 80... I've got 82 chapters and one chapter four, so however many to go, I'm not gonna do the mask because I can't be bothered. But yeah, I just wanted to note that I absolutely love her and I hope that she survives whatever this is the war and everything. I hope she survives because that's just gonna be so sad if she dies. But yeah, I'm gonna carry on reading now. This quote is just, I love it. Uh, but it says. Uh, it says, how many others had seen the truth of my suffering and tried to spare him from it, seen my suffering and done nothing to help me? And she's talking about Tamlin, obviously, because like Lucian knew, Alice knew, obviously she's a servant, but Lucian knew and he did nothing to like spare him. He d didn't say anything and stuff like that. She's like, how many people like completely just ignored me and did nothing to help me? to spare him of his feelings so that he wouldn't be upset that I was like this. And I'm like, yes, exactly. Put it exactly into words of the whole, just the whole thing, yes. But yeah. Deva is such a badass. Like, her little schemes that she's doing where she got dressed in like that nightgown then went to Lucian and said he had a nightmare for Tamlin to walk in and see them and get like jealous and think something's going on because she's trying to turn she's trying to turn basically all against everybody they tr she's trying to turn everybody in the summer court spring court sorry against each other and she's doing that to like Lucian and Tamlin right now I was like what a smart like she, she and she revealed that she knew exactly what she was doing she's like wore that dress for a reason she knew that Tamlin was gonna come up um to her room and she'd see them and he'd get jealous and be like wondering about Lucian and Tamlin I'm like ah she's so smart she is so smart I can't um guy I'm really excited to get to the Nesta book um I know people say it's like the most boring book out of all of them, but to be honest, I'm kind of excited for it because Nesta's such a complex character and I know most people hate her the way she treats uh, Faber and I don't like her as well for the way she treats Faber. She's being very annoying right now, like Faber just went to visit her sisters and she ha see how they were doing after they like been turned and Nesta's just, be just being rude, but then like... She mentions here, I wonder why no one had yet mentioned what now shone in Cassian's eyes as he gazed at my sister, the sorrow and the longing. And I'm like, are Cassian and Nesta mates? Are they mates or something? I don't know how, I don't know how the Elaine and Lucian thing is going to play out. But like, um, I know the last book is about Cassian and Nesta. I'm like... I feel like it's going to give like a fantasy reverse grumpy sunshine... Or maybe, no, not really, because Cassian's kind of grumpy as well sometimes with her. It's like an enemies to lovers, reverse grumpy, I don't know. But I'm interested is what I'm saying. I'm interested to read that book. But yeah, um, I've not gotten much since the last clip. I just wanted to say that. So guys, I finished that chapter. I'm now on chapter 16. I am just going to go have a shower now and then I think I'm going to take a break for the night because I'm also filming another video. I'm filming filming the reading thrillers for a week video, which should be posted by now. Um, but yeah, I'm, almost, I'm also filming that video and I'm also and I'm reading The Housemaid. I'm 32% of the ha through The Housemaid and I've got three hours. And I'm thinking that if I start reading The Housemaid now, I might be able to finish it by the end of today. Because it's currently like 6 o'clock. So I might be able to finish. And I need to wake up early tomorrow. So I can't stay up late. But I might be able to finish The Housemaid today. Or at least get ver or at least get like super close to finishing it. And basically get to the end of the book today. So then I can finish it tomorrow. So I might take. And then if I finish that within like a good amount of time. I might go back to reading A Court of Wings and Ruin. But yeah I think I'm going to take a break for today. This might pick up tomorrow, but this book is flying super fast for me. I'm like 23% of the way through the book. I'm on chapter 16 and it's just 
flying super fast. Reading on Kindle... Ow. Ow. Reading thick books on the Kindle makes it go by super fast. But even when I was reading on the physical book, it was also flying really fast. It's just the, the way the story is paced is very fast paced and everything and reading it on kindle makes it even more fast paced because most people know that reading on kindle does make it more fast paced sometimes sometimes it feels like with certain books it makes it go by longer but then it feels like with other books it makes it feel like it's going by quicker with other books it makes it feel like it's going by longer to me it's based on the book um and stuff and this is just a really fast fast paced book so yeah i'm like 23 percent of the way through and this is like first day reading it i'm very very surprised by that and i i just want to keep reading it i want to keep reading it all day but i have to it's so good that i have i'm having to force myself to stop reading that because i do need to finish the housemaid i've been reading the housemaid for ages but that's because it's not because i didn't like it i was actually really liking the book i'm loving the housemaid it's just that i was reading the a court of wings not a court of wings a court of mist and fury i was reading a court of mist and fury and then i just got distracted by that book if you know something about me i've mentioned it i've mentioned it multiple, multiple times i cannot read two books at the same time it's like such a thing with me and i know being doing videos on youtube makes that kind of like um a hard to do the job that i want to do it makes it very hard because i ha i find it very struggling to read two books at the same time and give like an appropriate amount of attention to both books for example i was reading the housemaid and i was basically flying through that and then i started doing the akatar vlog and then when i started doing the akatar vlog i obviously was reading a court of mr fury and then basically i just stopped reading the housemaid not because i didn't like it, it was because my sole attention was going into that book because it was amazing and i loved it and i just wanted to keep reading reading more and more and more of that book and i just didn't want to stop to read anything else i wanted to read that book like binge it i'm very much a binge personality i binge tv shows and everything like that i there's no point where i can stop and with the, with a series like that i have to binge the series i can't just like read one book and then read another one and then like no i have to read it binge i need to binge it so i wasn't reading the housemaid because i was just focused on that book so much that because i loved it so much and i just wanted to read it all in one go and yeah, so then I just kind of forgot and I've been trying really hard to get out of that habit and I've been trying really hard to be able to read two books at, at the same time, which is what my Kindle is handy for. I can usually, I can read two books at the same time if it's on my Kindle. Like I usually read a physical book and then I read uh, a book, an e-book on my Kindle because then it doesn't feel like I'm reading two books at the same time because... When I'm reading, re when I'm reading on my Kindle, it doesn't feel like I'm reading a book, even though I am. So it doesn't feel like I'm reading two books at the same time. And then usually I don't take physical books to uni with me because I take public transport. I don't have my license yet. So instead of having a book in my bag to weigh me down, I usually just take my Kindle because it's a light lighter. And I read the book that I have on my Kindle. And then when I'm home, I read my physical book. And then when I'm out, I read my Kindle book. Do you get what I mean? But because I was reading A Court of Mist and Fury on my Kindle and I was also listening to it on Audible because the book is so thick that I didn't want to read it physically. Uh, and I also wanted to I wanted to read the dramatised version because everybody said it was so good. So because of that, um, because of that, I was reading it on ebook, which is where I have the housemaid. I don't have the physical copy. I'm reading housemaid on Kindle. So I was just reading it on my Kindle the whole time and yeah that's why i haven't been reading the housemaid but i really do want to finish the housemaid because i want to know what's up with that and yeah but that's like for the vlog or the vlog should be out by now go watch it if you haven't it should be out hopefully if i did my job correctly um but yeah if not it was probably scrapped i don't know but i'm loving this book right now i just want to continue the book we got to the part where she went to visit her sister like i just said and elaine is completely like I feel so bad because I honestly did like Elaine. I, some people don't like, didn't like Elaine. I can't remember what she did in the first book to make like people not like her. But at least in this book, I liked her. I thought she was very sweet. She was just like the sweet. She was like the heads in the clouds. I get that she didn't do anything to help Feyre as well. But, and Feyre was the youngest and she didn't, and she's older than Feyre, but she didn't do anything to help. And I get that, but... I don't know she was just sweet at least she wasn't mean like Nesta she was like a, such a sweet person and like they described her in the book she's just like 
had so much light in her and so much innocence and now she's just like a complete shell like she's absolutely completely broken i honestly do not know what's gonna go on with elaine's story i don't even hear much of her mentioned like i knew about nesta and cassian i didn't know who they were but i knew nesta cassian tamlin and resand but i didn't know much about him and Azriel and stuff like that but Elaine is never mentioned, like, it was never mentioned on TikTok whenever, I, like, before I read the books. I didn't know anything about Elaine. So I don't even know if she's, like, in the next books or if she was only in the first two, three books. Because I don't know what her story is going to be. I don't know if she's going to be, like, a recurring character and she's going to be, like, a really import important character. Or if she's just going to be, like, one of them throwaway characters. Because Nesta's the one that always mentioned. Like, there's a book about Nesta. I think people have are saying that there might be a book about elaine coming out but i just never hear anyone talk about elaine i just don't feel like people really not like her i just don't feel like people really care i don't hear talk about her or her story like oh my god this happened with elaine and lucian or like anywhere does she even agree to the mating bond does she accept the mating bond okay like i don't i don't hear about her anywhere so I'm very curious to see what happens with her in this book and why no one talks about her but yeah i want more people to talk about elaine because i feel like she's a really good character to be honest she's just more quiet than nesta and Feyre. that's i feel like the thing maybe she maybe people just don't mention her because she's just the quieter out of the two and there's like she's like the boring one or whatever like not really much to be said but anyway yeah i'm gonna go take a shower and stop talking and come back and i'll see what i'll do you're probably either going to see me in a couple of minutes when i decide to keep reading or you'll see me tomorrow when i decide to keep reading or you'll see me in a couple hours from now when i've read the housemaid and i want to read a couple more chapters of this before i go to bed so yeah you'll see me in the next clip whenever that is hey guys um it's like the day after um I've read one chapter, just wanted to update that I am reading. I'm going to be reading for a bit, though, because I was quite busy today, so I didn't get a chance to read. So I'm only going to be reading for a bit, and then I'll have to go to bed, because I do have work tomorrow, unfortunately. So I'm 25% through. I was reading physically, but I'm now reading on the Kindle. I don't know why. I'm just obsessed with reading on the Kindle lately. And this is crazy because I never, and I mean never, used to read on the Kindle. I used to actually hate reading on the Kindle. I used to only like reading physically because I just, like, loved turning the page and stuff. And I still love, like, if I had to choose between reading on the Kindle or reading physically, I would choose reading physically all day long. I love just holding the book in my hands. I love the feel of the book in my hands. But especially with thick books like that, it's much easier to read on the Kindle. And one feature about the Kindle that I absolutely love is the fact that you can see how many minutes there's left in the chapter and how many minutes there's left in a book i love that because i'm someone who counts chapters like when i get to a new chapter i count how many pages there is until the next chapter i know why it's just a habit i like to know how many pages there is between a chapter but the kindle just tells me i like that and yeah so because i'm laying down in bed and i just want to be a more, bit more comfy i am reading it on the kindle um but because i'm on chapter 17 so i'm like still 25 percent through the book when I reach around chapter 20, I think I'll start reading it physically more often. Because like I said, it's like, it's just a struggle to hold. That's the main reason why I'm reading it on the Kindle. It's just like a struggle to hold right now because we're at the starting pages. And I have to like hold a brick. And it's it's very hard to hold with one hand. Like, so that's the reason why. Because it's very hard to hold with one hand. Um, And so yeah, I'm going to be reading it on the kindle until probably i reach chapter 20 which isn't far off because i'm already on chapter 17 so when i reach chapter 20 25 maybe i'll feel it'll be better it'll be easier to hold the book so i'm saying but yeah um so far no updates but yeah that's just the only thing i wanted to say i can't i can't um so they're at the meeting now of the High Lords and Tamlin shows up. And Reese says, I'm not in the business of 
uh, discussing our plans with enemies. And Tamlin says, "No, you're just in the business. You're, no, you're just in the business of fucking them." Okay, so slut shaming now. Got it. Got it. How? How? Um, uh, I don't think a character's ever made me this mad in a book before. I can't remember the last time I've been this mad over a character i hate him so much please tell me he dies at the end of the series like please tell me he dies i can't i literally can't the slut shaming oh i just don't i just i don't get what he doesn't understand i, I don't feel like this meeting's going very well i just don't get what they understand what they don't understand and it's really pissing me off i I literally don't have words because I'm trying to commentate on what's happening in the book, but I can't commentate because all I feel is anger right now. Right now, all I feel is anger, anger towards Tamlin and all the other high lords. That's all I feel. So I, that's all I can comment on. I can't comment on anything else. That's the only feeling I'm having right now, and it's just I hate him. Hell yes, Reese. Wow, the lighting is wow. Reese literally stopping his speech thank you he should have literally done that from the minute he walked in i don't know why he let him continue talking like that uh, she's just spinning everything i just reese is king and tamlin can die as really so underestimated and eris is why is like almost every man in this book just slut shaming for the way that more dresses or um tamlin talking about pharaoh and recent like why why is that a thing in this book why is literally almost every single man slut shaming be like oh surprised that pharaoh is high lady and stuff but anyway it doesn't matter because as of real That was amazing. What Azriel just did. Amazing. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, I'm on chapter 45, by the way. If you don't know what I'm on about. But yeah, loved it. This book is getting... I don't have my Kindle, so I have to hold the book. It's hurting bad. This is why I use the Kindle. Because holding a big book like this, especially... I'm like a bit of, over halfway now. So, Yeah. But I love that. Love Azriel. Very underrated. He's like the mysterious, quiet guy, but he will like kill you in your sleep. It's clear to me, it's very clear that Tamlin literally only came to this meeting just to like get payback for what's done. Because they're literally talking about the war, about how they found an antidote for the Fey Bane so they can face Hybrid with powers. And they're literally just talking about that, you know, talking about important stuff and then tamlin just randomly says um and tamlin just run randomly says uh where is it tamlin's family says at least you have armies to give it to that perhaps that was part of your plan disable my force while your own swept in or was it to see my people suffer like who freaking cares he's only here literally just to make pharaoh feel bad he's only here to try and Make Pharaoh feel bad for what she did in his court. He's not here because he cares about the war. That's literally proof. They were literally just talking about the war and strategies. And he came up with something. Started rambling on about something that doesn't even make sense. Or that doesn't even help the war. Or that it's literally not relevant to the war at all. He's just like, well, <laughs> at least you have it. Remember what you did in my court? Mm, you did this. Oh, did you just want it? Like, no one cares. Literally no one freaking cares. Yes, no one cares. like get over it it's really starting to piss me off he's so he's being so petty like just get over it he doesn't even care about the war at this point he's like so obsessed with just getting fairer back like we know we know she's like a queen we know she's a girl boss we know she's like an amazing person but freaking relax it's not like even she's your mate so you need to relax i'd understand like because they said that mates usually the male gets really crazy but they're not even mates her and resand are mates so if her and resand are mates and tamlin is this freaked out about this one girl vera imagine like what would happen if they were actually mates because 
honestly. This is just feeling very... He's just... He's feeling very much like an abusive person. Like, the, he's just an abusive person. He's the, the, he's the personification of an abuser in, like, this fantasy book. That's it. Because the, the manipulation, the, manip the manipulation, like, the hatred, the loathing that he has for favour, it's feeling very much abusive. And I'm glad she didn't stay with him. Even though, technically, when, even when she was staying with him, the things he did, like locking her in, were also abusive. So he's just an abusive person. He always has been. And he's just showing it now. And I just... I Why can't somebody just kill him? Because he's really annoying. I just do not want to see him on the page anymore. I just honestly don't want to hear him speak. Every time in this book, every time when it says his name and says that he's speaking, I'm just like, please... I just feel like I want to skip over it because I just don't want to don't want to hear what he has to say. So if he doesn't die in this book, I'm going to be very much upset because I do not want to deal with him for the next two books as well. I honestly do not. I don't care who kills him. He just needs to die. Um, Feyre and Reese are talking and she asks, do you think... My boyfriend just gone. Do you think that Tamlin was telling the truth by saying that he's always been working for their side because Tamlin claims that he's always actually been on their side and he was working he was working with Hybron as to kind of like fake him out and pretend he was working with him but he was actually working for their side. Um that's why he allied with Hybron. And then they're like, um and then we said that yes, he does think they're on their side. Um, no they are not. Reese Tamlin is literally gonna screw them over. I don't believe that what he said is true that he was only working with Hybron to get Feyre back and that after he got Feyre back he was going to basically switch sides in Hybron and kill him that's what he said that he was only working with him to get Feyre back but I'm like if that's true like it just makes some sense I don't believe that I believe that he's working with Hybron um and I believe he's gonna screw them over at some point there's not much of this book left it's I don't know if the rest of the war is going to go on in Nesta's book or if this is, like, just a short war. I don't know. We'll have to see. I feel so bad for Elaine. Oh, my God. You see, this is why I love Nesta. Nesta just, like, smacking the crap out of him. I love her. I honestly love Nesta. I feel so bad for Elaine, though. Honestly... Just get with Lucian, because Lucian is not as bad as that guy she was about to marry. His father, who's supposed to be the mean one, is nicer than him. I feel so bad for him. We haven't, I wonder if we're going to get a book about Elaine. We haven't got a lot of Elaine in this book. It's mainly been Nesta and Feyre, and Elaine's just been dealing with her own stuff. I wonder if we're going to get a book about Elaine and Lucian, and if that's like going to be the next book. I'm... Um, there's many like roads it could take. I can I can definitely see the next book being about Elaine and Lucian, but I don't know. Listen, I'm happy that Fair is a nice person, but like now is not the time. Now is not the time, babe. Like the serial is still alive, even though it's got an arrow through its neck, and I don't know if Fair is trying to heal it or what, because she said, "Oh, I can't heal it and take I take until I take the arrow out." And the serial is like literally telling her, "Run, like save yourself, run," because she's not dead yet. But there's a chance that um, she said that Hybern will take the serial in for questioning and all the serials ever wanted was freedom um, and everything. And so instead of running, Feyre faces Ian and stuff. I'm like, okay, I, I get it. But it's not like the serial is like Reesland or one of your friends. She's like, she, I get it. She's like being nice, but she's literally like a creature. I know she's like, helped her a bunch of times but like come on we we're in war times we do not have time for this we do not have time for this at all she should have just run it's very upsetting but she already had an arrow through her neck she should have literally just run because now what and now we've got ourselves in this situation she should have just run it's not the time to play friends and stuff especially not with creatures that you've met like a couple of three times and that you've only used ever to get information. It's not the time. You're not friends. Please. It's just like, it's stressing me out so much. Why don't you just run? Because now it's stressing me out. 
See, this is the reason that she needed to run because now I'm stressed out. And uh, why couldn't she just... And now I'm stressed. But yeah. Why was that actually a really sad death? Oh my god, like, that was, like, the death of the serial. Like, why was that? And the fact that she said, I, um, she's like, I told you to stay with the High Lord. And she's like, and she meant Reese all this time when she said at the beginning of the first book, stay with the High Lord. Vera thought she meant Tamlin because that's who she was with. But she meant Reese this whole time. And she said, I'm, that was actually so sad. I don't know why, but, like, that was, like, one of it was like one of the saddest moments in this book. I don't know why that scene just. And who would have thought it was literally just like a creature? Like I don't know. I love Feyre so much. She's able to like bring like creatures that everybody's scared of, and even have those creatures like like her, and like want to help her from how kind she is. From the way that, from how kind she is, she makes those creatures that are. Usually people are fearful of them. She makes them, like, I don't know. But yeah, that was, like, really sad. I was not expecting that. But yeah. Aunt is gone, I think. I think, hopefully, yay. And yeah, but that was really sad. I'm on chapter 61 now. I'm getting close to the end. And I honestly don't know how this is going to end. I don't know what's happening because i've only got a couple chapters left i've only got a few pages left and the war is still very much i don't know if this is going to finish like in a plot twist or in the middle of the plot where the war is still going on or if this is going to finish when the war ends i hope it doesn't finish on a plot twist actually no never mind i do have nesta's book but i don't know if nesta's book is going to come after this one i don't know i'm so confused I'll just see. This quote is literally the exact opposite of Tamlin. I am yours and you are mine. We do not let each other do things as if we dictate the movements of each other. But I might have insisted I go with you. More for my own mental well-being just to know you are safe. Amazing. Because she was like, would you let me? She said, would you let me go if I had? And he said, I do not let you do anything. You are your own person. You make your own choices. But we are mates. And I, the quote I just said is next. <sighs> See? This is the kind of energy that Tamlin was giving the opposite of. That's all I gotta say. That's all I gotta say. Oh my god. Virian and Armin. What the heck? I would also love a book by Armin, um, about Armin, by the way. Just her story and like her backstory and... I really hope that Armin doesn't actually end up leaving because I know they've discussed about her wanting to go back to her old world and like transform um, how the only way for that to happen is for her to leave the body that she's currently in and when she leaves the body that she's currently in she'll basically forget everybody and forget that she has like she loves them and forget that they're family and forget all of that because it's her human body that kind of makes her human and has these feelings so when she turns back into her original body she won't have these feelings anymore and I really hope that doesn't happen because that's going to be very upsetting I hope she decides to stay in this world in this body with the rest of them but yeah Armin and Varian kind of maybe need a book about them too I kind of maybe need a book about them obviously I've been sensing that clearly they have feelings for each other like I'm not blind I knew something was going on when he gave her that necklace and how but oh my god the boldness love I love that for her I'm on chapter 62 um just finished chapter 62 and I'm going to be taking a break it's currently eight it's currently nine o'clock which is just turned nine o'clock so I'm going to be taking a break and start up my reading again tomorrow because I'm going to be going to the gym early in the morning tomorrow. So then I have like all day to read tomorrow. So yeah, I'm on chapter 63. I'm literally, I don't know the percentage obviously because I'm reading it physically, but I'm, chapter 63 has got 82 chapters. So I'm a good, I'm a good way through like, I've got a couple chapters left. I feel like I can... If everything goes well tomorrow, I have nothing to do tomorrow except going to the gym, and that's in the morning. So if nothing, if everything goes well tomorrow and nothing distracts me or disturbs me tomorrow, then oh wait, I do, oh, I do also have a dentist appointment 
at around four o'clock. But other than that, I'm free all day. So if nothing distracts me or disturbs me tomorrow, I can definitely finish this book because I literally only have this much left. I can definitely finish this book tomorrow. If everything goes right, I can knock this book out of the park and definitely finish it. But yeah, I'm going to be taking a break today because I'm getting a bit tired. But yeah, I love how I'm ending on that. That's just great. I love that for her. Like, go off. I love Armin. Elaine's just been taken. Sorry if I sound weird, by the way. I just got my retainers. I'm not. But Elaine's just been taken. Beira went to go get her back. And she's run into Durian. The filth coming out of his mouth. Cause they're fake flirting right now because she's disguised as Ianth and Ianth was flirting with him so they ha they're fake flirting to make it seem real the filth that's coming out of the mouth the what honestly <laughs> says um come to my tent with me Ianth let me see what that pretty mouth can do and then um, he puts his hand on her lower back and he feels the sores that she's got there for, like, protection. Mm. And then he goes, um, seems like you've already got some steel in you. No need for mine. Why do I kind of like Durian? Why am I kind of liking him? Why am I kind of loving it? I don't know. I'm just liking Durian all of a sudden. All of a sudden he's a good guy. Are we going to get a book about him? I mean, probably not. But, like, all of a sudden, I like Durian. Wow. But anyway, yeah. It's a very high, intense situation right now. We're in enemy camp. Also, can someone please explain to me Azriel's powers? Because I'm so confused. Can he, like, turn into mist? Because I know he can manipulate shadows and whatever and, like, I've never really got what his actual power, like, was. Like, and just right now, he's in there, but he's, like... She said that he turned into a shadow. So I'm confused. Like... Can he just, like, turn into mist and, like, basically vanish, like, disappear? So he's, like, invisible and no one can see him because he's, like, a shadow? Because that's, like, that's what they're saying. They're saying that he's, like, hopping from shadow. I'm so confused. Someone please explain to that, that to me in the comments because I'm so confused on how his power works and i've never just i i can't but anyway yeah i'm reading a bit um i said i was gonna have all day to read i'm probably not gonna finish this book because well i went to the gym like i said i did some work for uni because i completely forgot that i have assignments to do so i did some work on my assignments which i actually did quite a bit of and then I had to go to the dentist to get my retainers and that took a while and then I just came home and watched a couple of videos and now it's like nine o'clock and I've only started reading now so I did not have all day to read but tomorrow I will have all day to read tomorrow I'll have all day to read and that's like seriously I'll have all day to read so tomorrow I will be finishing this book and that's a promise this time this book will be finished tomorrow by the end of tomorrow, that book will be finished. I also did my nails with the new... I don't think it's new, but the Essie Couture, Gel Couture Collection. Loving it. And I just did it in this purple. It's really cool. I don't know if I'm into the light style right now. I'm into more darker colours lately. But I ordered this one and it was... I ordered three colours and this is the first one that got here. And I wanted to redo my nails because the other ones were already starting to come off. So I did it with this purple one. Might change it after like a week because like I said, I'm into more darker colours. I don't know why, but the pastel lighter colours aren't hitting and everybody knows my favourite colour is purple, but I don't know. I just, I'm not into the light colours. I want a bit of, I'm into a darker vibe, but yeah. I just wanted to say that because like, yeah. I will have you know. Throughout this whole book, I have been shipping Asriel and Maul together the whole time. 
what I just read is the biggest plot twist I think this book has ever seen. I haven't even finished the series, and I don't care. This is literally the biggest plot twist in the whole series. What the heck? I did not see that coming in any way, shape, or form. I'm also lesbian. What? <gasps> oh wait is she bi i'm confused she says i i prefer females and then she says i do find pleasure in them in both But I've known since I was little, more than a child, that I prefer females. That I'm attracted to them more over males. That I connect with them, care for them more on that soul deep level. About the human city, all they care about is breeding their bloodlines, making alliances through marriage. Someone like me, if I were to marry where my heart desired, there would be no offspring. My father's bloodline would have ended with me. I have it. I knew it. Knew that I could never tell them, ever. People like me were, revi were reviled by them. Okay, so I think she's bi. I, I want to get it correct. I don't know. I don't think she's... Because she says she finds pleasure in both. But she prefers females. But she like... she. She finds pleasure in having sex with both. That's why she said that's why she had sex with Helion. She finds pleasure in both, but she prefers females. She prefers dating females. If she were like to marry anyone or be with anyone on a feelings based level, it would be with a female. So, okay, what well, I'm getting it, she is bi, but she just prefers females. <sighs> doesn't matter. The label doesn't matter. I'm just absolutely freaking shocked. What the heck? Out of everything that's happened in this book, the war and everything like that, <laughs> this is the thing that absolutely floored me. We literally just had like two whole chapters, like a whole chapter of them getting Elaine back from this war camp where they had to be super secretive to then the king find them out and they were being chased by these guard dog things. And then Tamlin came in and saved them. First of all, what the heck? I really hope there's not like a whole redeeming arc for him because no please when when that happened i was like please don't tell me that they're going to try redeem tamlin because i do not care i do not want tamlin to be redeemed i want tamlin to be dead so i really hope they're not trying to redeem tamlin and then they escaped but throughout that whole thing i was just reading it like straight face and then this happened and i literally audibly gasped like it, i wasn't even it wasn't a forced gasp i literally was reading and i went like this <gasps> i'm not even joking literally surprise it surprised myself i gasped and then i was like whoa what the heck was that i surprised myself i the, i this book's amazing wow guys Things are taking such a turn. I'm on chapter 72. Things are, like, moving so fast. We're full, fully in the war now. Vera's dad cropped up. Jacques and Miriam are here. Basically, it looked like we were losing for a sec. But then... But then... But then, Jack and Miriam showed up. Her father showed up with an independent human army. Okay. He's been nowhere throughout the whole book, but he shows up right on time. Perfect, don't even care. Jack and Miriam show up right on time. Um, basically, they've got countless ships now, and I love this book. I love this book. I'm loving this series. I do not want this to end. This is amazing. What just happened? Is Armin a bad guy? Do we just get betrayed by Armin, whatever? 
because she said she found a way to nullify the cauldron with two people. The only other way to nullify the cauldron, the only other way to nullify the cauldron was for Faber to die while doing it. And they just got to the cauldron and Faber like touched it and now Armin's doing nothing and she just said, I'm sorry, I lied to you. Like, what do you mean? Like, you're not a bad guy. Like, she's not a bad guy, is she? What is going on? Did she just betray Feyre? Please do not tell me she just betrayed Feyre and that she's actually a bad guy because I'm going to be so pissed. I loved Armin so much. I literally loved Armin so much. Please do not tell me that she's actually a bad guy and just betrayed Feyre and sacrificed Feyre's life to save everybody else. I mean, she's not a bad guy because if she's doing it, she's doing it. She's killing Feyre, yeah, but she's doing it to... She's doing it to sacri to save everybody else in the war, save Reese, whatever. But at the same time, if she does if she does this, Reese will literally never forgive her. Like Reese will never forgive her if she does this. Even if Feyre survives, Reese will never forgive her, I don't think, for doing what she tried to do. I'm so stressed. I'm so stressed. I think I might even actually finish this. I'm on chapter 74, by the way. This has got 82 chapters. I think I lied. I think I might actually finish this because there's no way I can stop reading. I've got this much of the book left. There's no way I can just stop reading. It's way too intense. It is way too intense right now to stop reading. I thought I'd be able to, like, stop reading and stuff. But I'm literally in the middle of the war. I'm in the middle of the final act plot twist. There's no way that I can stop reading F chapter every chapter ends on a plot twist and ends on a big thing it's currently eleven twenty seven, so it looks like i'm gonna be staying up late reading this book i refuse to believe that cassian's dying right now but i just have to read this quote because it's absolutely like wow i have no regrets in my life but this his voice shook with every word that we did not have time that i did not have time with you nesta she did not stop him as he leaned up and kissed her lightly, as much as he could manage. I love Cassie and Nesta. Absolutely love it. I mean, the girls see that coming, but still, absolutely love it. And he's not going to die. I'm not even upset about it, because I know Cassian's not going to die. Because I know that Nesta and Cassian have their own book. At least Nesta has her own book, and I'm pretty sure everybody talks about Cassian in it, because it's their story. So... I know he's not gonna die, but I don't know how they're gonna get out of this. Yes! Yes, Elaine! Yes! Elaine. Elaine has. Sorry. Elaine has been waiting for this moment the whole book. Who would have thought? Out of, out of everyone in this book, if you would have told me the person to kill the king would have been Elaine, I would have been like, no, nah, that doesn't seem right. And that doesn't seem right. But no, I honestly thought it was going to be Nesta. But no, it was freaking Elaine with that damn knife. And also, I like I said, I was shipping Asriel and more. But I did know that Asriel and Elaine were kind of having their own moment, their own thing. But I was very confused because Elaine is mated to Lucian. Which we haven't seen throughout the second half of this book, by the way. But... We've heard of him. He's okay. He's alive. But anyway. Um, so I was a bit weirded out. Because it seemed like Elaine and Azriel were having like. Sort of like you know little moments. But I was like. But she's mated to Lucian. And I thought that more and Azriel would get together. Because they clearly have their thing. But now that I know about more And how she prefers females. I'm pretty, pretty, sh I'm pretty sure that Asriel is going to end up getting with Elaine and like Elaine and Asriel are probably going to have their own book and they're probably going to end up being together because I don't think more and Asriel are mated I think Reese said that they aren't mated like they never had the bond but I'm confused because Elaine is mated to Lucian but they're giving very much romantic vibes like I have I've gotten zero romantic vibes from Lucian and Elaine so I don't think they're going to be together which would make sense because we have Reese and Feyre which is a couple that's mated and then we have Cassian and Nesta which we all know is a couple that's mated as well it's not revealed yet but I I got spoilers we know they're mated um they're mated so I feel like it's like nice to see a, a different perspective of a couple that's mated like Lucian 
and Elaine, but who aren't meant to be together. Because Reese has said that there are many couples who are mated, but just aren't meant to be together and aren't suited. And, like, we've got an Nesta and Castian and Feyre and Reese, which are suited to each other. So I feel like it's interesting. I now like how they're... I think that's how they're doing it. I, like I said, I don't know. But I think that's how they're doing it, where... I don't think Lucian and Elena are going to end up together. I think they're going to be a mating bond that is not suited to each other and that Elaine is going to end up rejecting the mating bond. And then after she rejects the mating bond, I think she's going to end up getting with Azriel and then maybe be mated to him. I don't know if he can have two mates. I don't know if he can reject a mating bond and then get mated again or if you can only have that one mating bond. But I definitely do think she's going to reject the mating bond because they're not made for each other. And then she's going to go with Asriel now. Now that we've learned about more, that's what I think is going to happen in the next series. Because I'm pretty sure this is not going to be revealed in this book or Nesta's book. I'm just saying that's what I think is going to happen in the future with Elaine. Just to keep it interesting. Instead of, instead of giving another story where two people fall in love and it turns out that they have a mating bond and that they're actually mates. I feel like... I feel like they switched it around. I feel like Sarah Jamas switched it around. She's like, this what time are we going to give you a story of people who aren't mated, of two people that are mated, but they aren't meant for each other, and two people that aren't mated, but they are, and do want to be together. Which I really like. I like how she, did, she just didn't... I, this is all speculation. I could be saying, oh, I really like this, and I could be completely talking absolute nonsense, but I feel like it's obvious now, or maybe I'm stupid. Or maybe I'm a genius. I don't know. But to me, I feel like it's obvious that I, that's the way it's going to go. Because there's been zero romantic anything with Elaine and Lucian. And there has been some little moments with Elaine and Asriel. So I think that's what they're setting up for. They're setting up for her to reject the mating bond with Lucian and get with Asriel. In my personal opinion. And since I think that that is 100% correct, I will say that that is a very good move. Instead of giving the same... Thing, it's giving a different type of romance instead of giving the same oh they fell in love and wow they're mates it's giving something different I really like it this is why I love Sarah J Maas and I, Sarah, J. Maas, Sarah J Maas is now officially one of my new favourite authors she's up there with Cassandra Clare and if you know um, Cassandra Clare is literally one of my favourite authors I love the Shadowhunter Universe series I haven't even read all the books in the Shadowhunter Universe series I've literally only read the Mortal Instruments but still, I love every single one of the books because I know I'm just going to love all the books because I just love the universe what just happened? please do not tell me that Reese is actually no please do not tell me that Reese is actually dead no, I I even refuse to believe it I'm going to continue reading because I just, I can't. Armin's back. Yes. Thank God I was so upset with losing y'all. Like, this can't... Armin can't just leave. 
thank god she is human though no one got her face don't know how that's gonna work out but i don't care i just want her back because i was stressed stressed but i'm on i'm on chapter 78 so still quite a few chapters to go so i'm a bit scared because there's still there's still five chapters left i'm bad math so yes i had to count there's still five chapters left so i'm like okay so what's gonna happen in these next five chapters because it seems like all the loose ends have been tied so what is going to happen i finished the book i have no words Again, um, ratings will be at the end. But I I have no words, so I'm pretty sure you can guess what the rating is. I realized I made the update last night, but I actually did start a quarter of Frost and Starlight. It's now the next day, I'm on chapter... Um... 18 yes i'm on chapter 18 this has got 27 chapters it's a really short book it's literally only got like 200 and something pages it's got like 230 pages around there and so far i'm enjoying it but this is literally a novella it's to do with her favor basically celebrating her first soloist in um the night court because the only one she ever had before was the one in spring court but this is her first one at the night court and it's basically about that so it's been a bit hard for me to get into the first couple because this isn't like the other books it's very much it's it's got no action or anything like that this is literally just a book about family and char it's not got a plot is what i'm saying this is more of a character description because it's not got a plot it's literally just about them and her whole family getting ready for this for the winter solace and that's literally it so it's kind of like a character description of what everyone's going through their feelings after the war what they had to deal with after the war and it's literally that so it's not really interesting there's no plot or anything there's no like war stirring up there's like loose little plot points to do with the Illyrian warriors and stuff that I think might go into the next book. But right now, it's literally just you get different perspectives. You get Cassians. We've had Faerys. We have we've had Resands. We've even even had more perspectives. So we've got multiple different POVs, but it's mainly Faerys POV. Um, but you get mainly different POVs, and yeah, that's basically what the book is. And I like how we get different POVs. I feel like that was very interesting. I, I like how we get different POVs. But I can see how this is like the least favorite book of everybody because it is just a novella. So this wouldn't be the most favorite book of everybody since it's a novella. So I do get that. And I do get that reasoning behind it. So yeah. But so far I am liking it. It just feels a bit like... It's basically a break from the story, I think. We've had such intense books to do with, like, the war and everything that I feel like this is sort of just giving us a break, being like, okay, now let's calm down for a bit before we get back into the politics of the world again. So, yeah. It's like a nice little palate cleanser between the next book. Because the next, I think, Nessa's book is going to be the longest, so it's a nice little palate cleanser between that. So it's not like going in between all those books but it is hard to get through i've been trying to find this on audiobook but i can't find it anywhere um i found the first half on i found the first half of the audiobook on youtube for free which helped a lot because it that was up to chapter 15 which helped a lot because i was really struggling to get into it um and i thought that i'd zoom into this book but it's actually taken um a while to get into i thought that i'd be able to like read this book in one day i started it technically on the 29th um which was yesterday i'm pretty sure no wait today's the 29th uh, give me a second i started this on the 29th so i'm pretty sure i can finish this today like i've literally only got this left but 
um it is taking me longer than i thought i thought i'd already be finished with this book so i did have to read the first part on audiobook that i found on youtube which made it go by so fast and i thought maybe i should just read the whole book on audiobook because it makes it go by faster especially with a book that's very hard to get into one of my main tips if you're finding it really 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 hard to get into a book listen to it on audiobook first like at least the first 20 30 percent listen to the first like 50 percent of the book on audiobook and then it's much easier to go and read it because i listened to the first 50 percent of the book on audiobook till chapter 15 because it's got 27 chapters and then now i'm reading it and it's much easier to read now because i've gotten through that lull of the book so i would recommend that and i tried to find the rest of the book on audiobook but i just couldn't find it and i don't have any credits on audible so i couldn't use audible because i've wasted all my credits and i can't return any of the books because I was just gonna I was gonna return one of my audiobooks, but I can't do that because apparently there's a limit and I've already returned a few. So yeah, it's just really annoying. But anyway, yeah. I'm want to finish this book today. I've literally only got this left. Um so yeah. I will be finishing this today and then probably starting Nesta's book at some point today and getting a bit through that just to like, you know, start it. But yeah, that's just my update. I'm probably not going to have many thoughts about this book. Like I said, it's got no plot. It's just a character assessment. So I'm not going to have many thoughts about this. So you're probably not going to get much of that. Because um, I've been reading the book and I've had no thoughts. Except for that Nesta's... Okay, I don't know what's up with Nesta, but she's being a bit... Something's going on. Like, she's just not talking to anyone. She's basically bought her own apartment and put her place for herself she's going out to these sketchy bars and going home with these sketchy men and i'm like okay what's going on with nesta and i think it's the toll that i think she's just trying to deal with her father's death and she's dealing it in a different way than elaine and Feyre are dealing with it i think because nesta Nesta, out of all of them, was the one who hated their father the most. Elaine loved her father the most, I think. Nesta hated the, her father. And I feel like, for that reason, the reason that she hated her father until he died, she's always hated him. I feel like, for that reason, her father's death hit Nesta harder than it did Elaine. Because there's, like, unresolved feelings of she hated him. But at the same time, she also did love him because of her father and he died. So she, like spent her whole life hating him and i feel like maybe she's there's like some guilt with that that she wasn't able to like say have a better relationship with him while he was alive i don't know uh because in the end her father did do the right thing and i guess she was never able to say thank you or anything um when her father died and yeah but anyway i'm gonna keep reading this book uh probably will finish it today and I am. That's just the update. I've got nothing else to say. I just have to take a minute to mention this quote when they're talking about buying a new house and Vera building the new house. He says, um, Build a house with an office for you and one for me. Build a house with a bathtub big enough for two and for wings. Build a house with rooms for all our family. Build a house with a garden for Elaine. A training room for the Illyrian babies, a library for Armin, and an enormous dressing room for more. Build a house with a nursery favour. And then she responded, I will, I promised. Love it. Um, I absolutely love that. What's the next book going to be about then? Like, are we going to see their kids? I'm so, ah, I'm so excited for the next books. Hopefully they will be released soon and I don't have to wait that long. But you never know. I just finished the book. It was very cute. I loved it. Um, the ending part where Faber builds the studio for the kids to paint. Oh, I just love Faber so much. She's I love Faber so much. The fact that she built that studio and made it free for everybody. And this last quote as well. Let's see if I can find it. It's good. They brought the quote back. It says, To the stars who listen, Feyre. And then she replies, To the dreams that are answered, Reese. And I'm like, ah. I love it. And yeah, I just finished. 
So, on to the next, I guess. Hey guys, it's been a very, 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 very long time since I've picked up uh, an Akotar book. It, it's like April 18th and I haven't read a single book this month, including A Corpse Over Flames, which is the next book that I was going to start. Um, but I've started it now. I'm on chapter three. And I do have a couple thoughts. Um, basically, Feyre just told Nesta to like get her act together. You're not living in that house anymore. You're going to the House of Wind. You're living there now. And um, you're going to train with Cassian whether you like it or not. Blah, blah, blah. And I don't want to speak bad on Feyre's name. I'm not saying that. Because obviously something had to be done about like Nesta. Like she she was destroying herself. But I can understand why. Because uh, like she said, Nesta to be honest, I, I was I didn't expect Nesta to be the one affected most by the war. But she she was. She for some reason was the one most affected by the war. Um which is strange. I thought it'd be like Elaine. Elaine, Elaine seems like the most fragile. Or even Feyre. But like the reason why she's like spiraling so much is because of this. There's a quote here I think. Um, if I can find it. Um, uh, And she says she doesn't feel in control. And I feel like taking her control away at this moment. I feel like she doesn't just start communicating. Because obviously Feyre doesn't know any about this. Anything about this. But I think Feyre doesn't know how much the war actually affected Nesta. And that's why she's acting this way. Um, So she just needs to communicate a bit better. But... I completely understand it like here she says um she says um why would i ever want to stay in this house where she could see precisely how happy they were when none of them seemed remotely as decimated as she'd been by the war like there's there's another quote that i uh tabbed if i can even find it there's this quote here. It just makes me so sad for Nesta. I already like feel so much for her and the book has just started. But it's this quote that says, um it's a long one, but it says she'd never explained to Feyre, had never found the words to explain why she'd put such distance between them all. Elaine had been stolen by the cauldron and saved by Azrael and Feyre, yet the terror still gripped Nesta, waking and asleep. The memory of how it had felt in those moments after hearing the cauldron's seductive call and realising it had been for Elaine, not for her or Feyre. How it had felt to find Elaine's tent empty, to see that blue cloak discarded. Things had only gotten worse from there. You have your lives and I have mine, she'd said to Elaine last winter solstice. She'd known how deeply it would wound her sister, but she couldn't bear it. The bone-deep horror that lingered, the flashes of that discarded cloak, or the cauldron's chill waters or Cassian crawling towards her or her father's neck snapping so basically she's just talking about her trauma from the war and how that's why she's distanced herself because she because of her trauma from the war she's distanced herself I'm guessing it's like maybe because she doesn't want to care because um in the last book she was like she mentioned that she was starting to like be in the inner circle she was starting to like be a part of the little family and then the war happened and um Elaine was kidnapped and everybody almost died and I feel like um that it brought out so much emotion in her and like her father dying and everything it made her realize that she does care I feel like the reason why she's distancing herself is because she realized that she cares so much about these people to the point that if any of them got hurt it would like break her and that's why she's distancing herself because she doesn't want to care about them that way because she doesn't want to get hurt by them getting hurt, if that makes sense. And that's why she's distancing herself from Elaine because of what happened and how she felt and the terror she felt when Elaine got kidnapped. I feel like the best way she thinks to deal with it is to just distance herself from Elaine, not be involved with Elaine so that she can never feel that terror again for her because she obviously loves her sister. Um, 
uh there was also yeah it says here um she had come so close to being a part of it of that circle had held their hands as they stood together on the morning of the final battle and believed they might all make it then she learned precisely how mercilessly it might be ripped away what the cost of hope and joy and love truly was she never wanted to face it again never wanted to endure what she'd felt in that forest clearing with the king of hype and chuckling blood everywhere her power hadn't been enough to save him that day she supposed she'd been punishing it for failing her ever since, keeping it locked tight inside her. Because she said here, if we're going to break this down, she said um, that she'd come so close to being a part of the circle, had held hands as they stood together on the morning of the final battle, and believed they might all make it. And then she says here, then she learned precisely how merciless it might be ripped away. So she realised during the war how easily it could all be ripped away, like... Her family, like Nesta, like Feyre, Elaine, the circle that she was beginning to be a part of, she realised during the war how easily that could be ripped away. Cassie almost died. Elaine almost died. They all almost died. And I feel like, obviously, it's a war. So, of course, their lives are going to be at risk. But I don't think she, like, fully processed that their lives would be at risk, if you get what I mean. And I feel like she realised when the war was happening, when Elaine was kidnapped, when Cassian was on death's door that it could be easily taken away because she said she, she believed they might all make it and then she realized during the war that oh this is serious like this could be like all ripped away from me the moments of happiness that she's had in her life which has been in the fey land could all be ripped away um and that was the cost of hope and joy and love was that the cost could be that that could all be ripped away at any moment and that's why she says she never wants to face that again she did she never wants to face knowing that it can all be ripped away so that's why she's distancing herself making herself not want to feel for them she ma she wants to make herself basically emotionless not want to care for these people um because she doesn't want to face that terror of knowing that it could all be ripped away um at any moment and that's why she's just doing what she's doing, I feel. So, yeah. Um, But yeah, just wanted to share those few quotes. Because I totally get Nesta's point of view. Um, I don't know, maybe Feyre's tough, like, tough luck will work. But... Yeah, I totally get Nessa's point of view. It makes complete sense to me. And I feel like she... I know that technically Feyre doesn't know about any of this because Nessa hasn't communicated it. So I feel like that's one of the problems um, that Nessa needs to kind of communicate all of this to Feyre because Feyre knows that she's had some trauma. But I don't think Feyre or anyone know how bad of trauma she had from the war. They think I feel like they think that she's so strong that they don't realise how bad her trauma actually is. And that's why they're like, Okay, you're going you're doing this now. So they don't realise how bad it's actually gotten. But anyway, yeah. I'm seven percent through this book. Wow. I don't know how I'm gonna finish this by the end of April. After saying that, I feel like I just found the perfect quote that encapsulates encapsulates everything I just said. So she just says, um, In the months leading to and during the war, Nessa had managed, had stepped into this world with these people and started to see it, a future, until she'd been hunted by the King of Hybern and the Cauldron, until she'd realised that everyone she cared for would be used to hurt her, break her, trap her, until the last battle when she couldn't stop 1,000 Illyrian Illyrians from dying and had instead been only able to save one him she would do it again if forced to and knowing that she couldn't bear that truth either so she's basically she knows she cares about them she doesn't hate them or like nesta even though the way she treats them makes it seem like she hates them it's that she cares about them and she imagined a future with them but during the war hyben used cassian and used these people to trap nesta um and use the lane to to trap Nesta to be able to hurt Nesta and break her and she she doesn't want ever to be have she doesn't want someone to ever have that kind of control over her is what I'm getting from she doesn't want anyone because she's very much a person that likes to be in control 
and she didn't like how she technically wasn't in control in the war because Hyburn would use the people she loved against her. So he'd had control over her. And she doesn't like that. So she's distancing herself so that she doesn't have people she cares about so that technically they can never be used against her because she doesn't have any people she cares about. She has If she has no one she loves, if she has no one she cares about, then they can't ever be used against her. They can't ever get hurt and she can't, she can't ever get hurt from them getting hurt, if you get what I mean. But yeah, it just... This... I've already got so much to say about this book and I'm literally only 7% of the way through. I'm on chapter 3 and I've already got so much to say. Loving it so far. I'm taking a brief intermission to show you what I just got in the mail that I bought um, literally a couple days ago. I had to buy the hardcover collection because I need to annotate the series. It's absolutely beautiful. I wanted to really annotate this series because um, if you know, usually when I have favourite series, I have to buy, I have to annotate them. Usually I get the hardcovers and annotate them because I don't like double annotating or anything like that. And I don't, I don't usually like annotating paperbacks. I prefer annotating hardbacks. And I saw them on Amazon, so I thought, why not? And I bought them. And I can't wait to annotate this series. Obviously, I won't be doing a video on annotating the series because I just am doing this video where I'm basically reading the series. But I will be doing a video where I annotate and reread the first book because I do um, obviously want to annotate. I want to go back through the book and see all the signs that I missed for what happens in the rest of the series. So I will be making a video on that. Um, and yeah, I just absolutely love it. Um, and this is definitely going to be the type of series that I reread on a yearly basis, um, which is very hard to get. The only series I reread on a yearly basis is usually Harry Potter and the Mortal Instrument series. Those are my favorite series of all time, and they're the only ones that I, and even Hunger Games. Those are the my favorite series of all time, and those are the only series I reread and on a yearly ba basis. They're the only books that I've actually reread more than once um i've reread icebreaker but i've only reread that once but harry potter and city of bones i've reread that so many times and i could definitely see this being a series i reread so that just tells you how much i'm already in love with the series and that should tell you the rating for the series overall like i said i'm saving ratings to the end but if i'm saying that this is definitely going to be a series that i reread every like year or something I already want to reread the series. I'm not even finished with A Court of Silver Flames and I already want to reread this and start from book one and like reread and annotate the full series. But yeah, this is the book one. I just wanted the grey versions because I feel like the colours look absolutely amazing. And here's my favourite. I know most people's favourite is A Court of Mr. Fury and that's like a close second like that's my second favorite book in the whole series but this is probably my favorite this is probably my favorite book in the whole series um i like a court of mr fury it's just a bit slow at the start nice it's just a bit slow at the start because i honestly didn't like tamlin and tamlin was pissing me off so much so the tamlin parts i just absolutely hated but that might just be key. i might just need to reread that series at some point but and then we also have a course of flames which i'm currently reading gigantic but i i absolutely love the gray and whites and everything um and it came in this like slip case oh that's absolutely beautiful with all these designs and with sarah jms there so usually i throw these cases out because i don't ever use them i put them on my shelves but I think I'm actually going to keep this one because it's just so beautiful and it just goes so well with the books. So I might actually keep it. Um, but yeah. Back to reading now. I just wanted to do a brief intermission that I got them and I'm very happy. And I just want to reread the whole series from start to finish now and annotate it. But I will save that for another time, I think back to the series back to a core of silver flames i mean um 
hey guys i'm on chapter five now um i'm gonna stop for the night and probably carry on probably not tomorrow because tomorrow i'm going over tomorrow i'm spending the weekend at my boyfriend's house so i probably won't update tomorrow i probably won't even read tomorrow but i'm on chapter five it's currently like eight and i just wanted to take a break because i was a bit tired from reading but so far i'm liking it um, I know that people say that this is, like, the least favourite book because it's very slow at the start and, like, it's it doesn't have as much action as A Court of Wings and Ruin and A Court of Mist and Fury. And it's mainly just about Nesta and you get the backstory of Nesta. You get kind of, like, a character story on Nesta and, like, most of the action is only towards the end. This is literally just about Nesta and understanding her character. So... I'm going into it thinking that I'm not expecting much action um, because people mainly say that this is literally just about Nesta's character. It doesn't have much action in it at all. I'm assuming the next books we're going to get are going to be more action based, um, which is kind of this it kind of it kind of reminds me of the first book, A Call of Thorns and Roses. And when we were introduced to Faber and we got Faber's character and we were learning in the first half of the book, it was like really... It wasn't really boring, but it was a bit boring compared to the second half of the book. Because in the first half of the book, you were literally just learning about Nesta. Learning about her character. Learning what makes her tick. And then you've got the action throughout the last half. This is what it's, like, giving me. Like, right now, we're learning what makes Nesta tick. We're learning why she does what she does. The decisions that she makes and why she does them. And her justification. And, um, I don't know what action we could get. But there's been some talk about the human queens and the human queens like up to stuff. So I'm guessing they wouldn't put that in the book unless it was actually going to turn into something. So that's probably got something. Something's probably going to go wrong there. But yeah, currently chapter five. I'm going to stop for the night. I will pick it back up on Saturday though. Because on Saturday I'll be able to read. But yeah, so far really liking it. And I'm honestly not minding the character study because I I I'm enjoying getting into Nesta's head and seeing what makes it tick. I'm actually enjoying that part. So yeah, see you in the next clip. Hey guys, um, I just wanted to update. I've actually not got much to update on, but I wanted to update that I'm on chapter twenty of um A Court of Silver Flames. I'm thirty percent of the way through and very excited about that i want to try and get to 50 percent today um so yeah that's like for chapter 40 i think i can do it um i do want to try and get to 50 percent like still a lot of the book to go um right now i do notice that it is it is a bit slower than the rest of the books I totally understand why this is everybody's least favourite book because it is a lot slower. This is, I would describe it more as like Nesta's character study. It's not very action based at all. There's hardly any like action in it. And I feel like I would describe this more as like Nesta's character study, at least the first half. The first half is mainly a character study of Nesta, of how why she how she thinks the way she thinks and basically what makes her tick so basically throughout the whole series what we've been the questions we've been asking like why is nessa so, so mean why does nessa prefer elaine over favor what has favor ever done to nesta why is nesta always acting this way and stuff like that we're finding out in this book and it's like mainly just a character study which i don't mind because i actually really like nesta i don't know if mainly people didn't like this book because they didn't like nesta so like if you didn't like nesta you probably aren't going to like this book because it's mainly just about her and her character study but i to be honest i like nesta i liked her since a court of war and ruin one i liked her since then um and yeah, she's done, like, obviously, horrible things, and she's not, like, she's a very complex character. That's what I like about her. She's very, she's a very complex character. Um, so yeah, it's not a thing of, I didn't like her. So if you don't like Nesta, you're probably not going to like this book. But that's what it is. It's just figuring out why Nesta is the way she is. And if you don't like her, you're probably not going to like reading about her, about this whole book, and the things she does, because she's still mean in this book. 
she's gotten a bit better, but she's still like she. The only person she's really treating nicely is Cassian at this point, and she's treating him nicely sometimes. Sometimes she doesn't treat him nicely, but like we're making progress with her. But she's still just the way she treats her sister is still awful. But I understand why she's doing it. She just has to have like a better outlet and think. Nesta could benefit from like therapy, probably. I think they all could benefit from therapy, but mostly Nesta. But yeah, I'm on chapter 20. I want to get to the uh, 50% through this book today. So I want to get to chapter 40. Um, currently watching Destiny, so that will have to like wait until later in the day. It's currently 2 o'clock um, on Monday, 22nd of April, and it's two o'clock so i feel like i've got plenty of time to get to chapter 40 of this book plenty of time i don't think i need to rush um so yeah i don't know if i'm gonna be reading physically i've been mainly reading on my kindle this whole time while reading the book just because like if the book is absolutely like just huge especially when you get to this point like Holding the book gets like I have to bend the page all the way back, but I might I might read physically. We'll see where the day takes us. Um, if I wanna be laying down while reading, I'll probably be reading on my Kindle, but we'll see. But yeah, that's the update. I will be reading more today, just not right now, because I've got YouTube videos to watch that are very important. But yeah, see you in the next clip. What has just happened, guys? I've just been reading A Course of the Flames on my phone, and I was pregnant. I'm obsessed. I can't believe it. Faber is pregnant. I kind of feel bad for Nesta. That, you know, the everybody was just, like, joyously about it, and Nesta was just like, yeah, I kind of feel bad for Nesta. But... Oh, I can, I hope we get this in Feyre's POV. I'm so upset that we did not get like her finding out and her telling Resand that she's pregnant in their POV. I'm so upset. Can can you have just put that in a court of wind and ruin like an epilogue of them finding out or something? Because that would have been amazing. Or hopefully we get like we hopefully. We get more books of favor and Resand, and we get like their POV throughout this whole thing. As in, like we're now in Nesta's POV. Hopefully, we get a book where it's the same timeline, but in their that so like we get to see them finding out. I hope that's what happens, and we weren't just robbed of that. But yeah, things are starting to spice up. Um, we have like potentially a new war on the horizon because of the queen so things are starting to like get a little bit more intense so it's progressing a bit more it's not like the same it's starting to like pick up is what i'm trying to say but yeah i will be reading more today but i'm gonna do my nails now and i'll probably read some more after i've done my nails but yeah that was just the update that I wanted to give to everybody. I'm loving Feyre, um, sorry, not Feyre, Nesta's friendship between Elaine and Gwen. I absolutely love it. I just wish she could be this way with Elaine and Feyre as well. It kind of feels like they're not substitutes for her sisters, but like I wish it could be this way with them as well. But I just love the friendship. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, cause I just got to, I'm fifty four percent of the way through, chapter thirty eight, and I just got to the part where they're all training after the thing with Nesta and Cassian occurred. Finally, by the way, but um halfway through the book finally happened uh fully but that's happening and they like know when they're just like making fun of her for it because basically 
Nessa says, when do we get to do some things of use? When do we start an archery or swords? And then Cassian says, you think you're ready to handle a sword? And then Emery let out a fizzing noise but kept working as in like, he's like, you think you're ready to handle a sword? And then Emery just started laughing. And our, it's just funny. I love their banter and I love the friendship that has, the, the friendship that Nessa has had with the priestesses. I think it's really amazing. And also, I, I haven't mentioned as well, but I also think it's absolutely amazing and so sweet that Nesta um, put the sign-up sheet for the priestesses. I feel like that is so sweet. People always see, I feel, Elaine and Feyre as the sweet ones and the nice ones. But see, Nesta is nice. She literally did this. With the, like, she does care. She literally put a sign-up sheet for the priestesses because they haven't been outside in ages and she wanted them to feel strong how she felt strong while training with Cassian and I think that's just that's just so sweet that's something Feyre Fe would do that to me is something Feyre would do and Feyre is always seen as a nice one always seen as the helpful one who is like innocent and would never want to hurt anyone but Feyre is the same way I feel like in her own certain ways she also is a nice person and I just love it I love her don't mind the noise in the background guys but what i really like have to say is i love the relationship between the house and nesta i don't know i don't know why but i don't know why a house is getting me like it's not even a character in the book but just the house itself and how the house of wind like basically knows what you need and like is kind of sentient at least towards Nesta I don't know if that's something to do with the power or not I'm very confused about that because it doesn't seem to be sentient to anyone else because even Cassian was surprised like you're saying that the house like talks to you she's like well he doesn't she's like well the house doesn't talk back but like the house like we talk he understands me and, he, Nes and Cassian was like very like wait what so even he was confused and he's like been at this house and known this house for like years upon years and he didn't even know the house was like sentient, but it seems to have. It seems to be that Nesta and the house are having like this relationship. Like Nesta and the house are freaking closer than Nesta and Feyre at this point. Like the the house saw that she was like, need climbed the stairs and she was tired, so it gave her water, and then she was sweating, so it gave her a cool breeze. And stuff, so she would, and she was like, "Thank you." And then she could like feel the house reply. I'm like, "Is this part of a power?" Because I don't know what is going on, but I'm at the same time loving it because Fairy needs a friend right now, and it's kind of sad that one of her only friends is a house. But Fairy does need a friend right now. I'm currently reading on my Kindle. Um, why are these chapters so long? It says I've got twenty two minutes left in the chapter. Why are they so long? But I'm forty two percent of the way through, so I have made a lot of progress. I'm like nearly halfway through and I do want to finish this by the end of this week hopefully because uh, I just really want to finish the series because I'm loving the book so far so far I can see why people would say this is a least favorite book but personally I'm really loving it maybe not as much as Aka War yet but it's getting a bit more actiony it's getting more action-packed a bit so we'll see how it ends I'm loving favorite um Sorry, not favorite. Nesta's friendship between Elaine and Gwen. I absolutely love it. I just wish she could be this way with Elaine and Feyre as well. It kind of feels like they're not substitutes for her sisters, but like I wish she could be this way with them as well. But I just love the friendship. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, cause I just got. To, I'm thirty four percent of the way through, chapter thirty eight. And I just got to the part where they're all training after the thing with Nesta and Cassian occurred, finally, by the way. But, um, halfway through the book, finally happened, uh, fully. But that's happening and they, like, know and they're just, like, making fun of her for it because basically... Nessa says, when do we get to do some things of use? When do we start an archery or swords? And then Cassian says, you think you're ready to handle a sword? And then Emery let out a fizzing noise but kept working as in like, he's like, you think you're ready to handle a sword? And then Emery just started laughing. And our, it's just funny. I love their banter and I love 
the friendship that has the, the friendship that Nesta has had with the priestesses. I think it's really amazing. And also, I I haven't mentioned as well, but I also think it's absolutely amazing and so sweet that Nesta um put the sign up sheet for the priestesses. I feel like that is so sweet. People always see, I feel, Elaine and Feyre as the sweet ones and the nice ones. But, see, Nesta is nice. She literally did this. With the, like, she does care. She literally put a sign-up sheet for the priestesses because they haven't been outside in ages. And she wanted them to feel strong, how she felt strong, while training with Cassian. And I think that just, that's just so sweet. That's something Feyre would do. That, to me, is something Feyre would do. And Feyre is always seen as the nice one, always seen as the helpful one who... Is like innocent and would never want to hurt anyone, but Fair is the same way. I feel like in her own certain ways, she also is a nice person, and I just love it. I love her, guys. Did we just get a your mother joke from Cassian? This is <laughs> this just made me laugh so much. Basically, Cassian's thinking about like Nesta and everything and all that. And he says, and Helion asks him, what are you thinking about? And then he replies, your mother. What? <laughs> what a random joke. That just, I imagined Cassian saying that in the most British accent possible. And it's just, it made me laugh. Because it just, it just, <clears throat> I imagined Cassian saying that in the most roadman accent you could ever have. And it made me laugh to just like them using these fancy words, and then me in my head just hearing Cassian go, Your mother. I don't know. Anyway, I'm on chapter 41, 40? 50% through of the book. But yeah, loving it so far. Loving this book. Loving. The action is actioning, and I'm liking it. I'm on chapter 15, I can't handle this. I love Nesta so much. It's so hard to see her going through this, thinking that everybody hates her and that she's a horrible human being and, like, having all these thoughts. And the fact that this line literally broke something in me when it said, she made the stones before she fell to her knees, so hard to rock it into her bones. Was she worth being counted? She knew the answer, had always known it. Cassian whirled towards her, but Nessa didn't see him either or hear his words. Not as she buried her face in her hands and wept. Is she worth being counted? Like, she doesn't... <sighs> Chapter 15. I need to go to sleep, but I don't want to finish. I'm just the of the way through, and this is making me so sad. How can anyone not love this book? I absolutely love Nesta. Nesta's probably one of my favorite characters now. Nesta's turning into one of my favorite characters. I love her so much. She's just so complex, and no one gets her. No one but Cassian gets her. Not her own sisters get her in this moment in time. Did I'm? I just can't talk. Of, like it's just wow. We've just had, like, a breakthrough the first time she's ever talked about her dad. When she, she says, I let him die, he went quiet. Through her hands on her face, she continued to whisper. He came to save me and fought for me, and I let him die with hate in my heart. Hate for him. He died because I didn't stop it. Her voice broke, and she wept harder. And I was so horrid to him until the very end. I was so, so horrid to him all my life. And still, he somehow loved me. I didn't deserve it, and he did, and I let him die. And she she basically takes so much. She thinks everything is her fault. Um, Her father dying. Elaine being taken away. She takes it on so much and she thinks it's all her fault and that everybody hates it hates her she bowed her she bowed her knees saying into her palms i can't undo it i can't fix it i can't fix that he is dead i can't fix what i said to Feyre. i can't fix any of the horrible things i've done i can't fix me Don't lock me out. You want to walk in silence for a week? I'm fine with that, so long as you talk to me at the end of it. 
That's all I have to say. Cassian is king. I love this relationship. N no, I'm going to say anything else. Do I love him more than Feyre and Lysand? You'll have to stick to the end of the video to see that. I'm just going to round this out by saying that I love this book. It was a five stars. And I love this series and I can't wait for the next book in it. I'm pretty sure that Sergio Mass teased the next book in a picture like she's currently writing it and I'm really hope I really hope that it comes out soon. But I feel like we should go over all the ratings official for the book. Um A Call of Mist and Fury, I'm going to be rating a I'm with this book I'm in between a five stars and a four point seven five. I just, I don't know. Everybody says that this is a five star. For me, my five star was a call of Echo War. I don't know. I just, it was a bit slow, but I really did like it. I think I'm going to rate it 4.75 because everybody else rates it five stars, but I don't want to, I don't want my reviews to be dependent on somebody else. And honestly, I love this book, but I, it, did, it didn't give me the five star feeling. It didn't give me the feeling that Echo War and A Court of Silver Flames gave me. It just didn't give me the same feeling. So I will have to be rating this at 4.75, which is still very good. It just didn't give me that oomph that I get from a five star. So, 4.75. Uh, a Court of Wings and Ruin, I'll be rating at five stars, obviously. I really, really loved this book. I, I loved all the politics. I loved all the fantasy. I loved Resand and Feyre. I loved all of it. I loved that the sisters came back in this book. You didn't get much of the sisters in the uh, Court of Mr. Fury, but I love how the sisters came back in this and Elaine and Nesta. I love the relationship. I think that's why this is my favorite book because you just you also get to see the sisters, and I love I love seeing the relationship between all of the sisters. So even though I really like A Call of Mr. Fury, I feel like, I don't know, I was just missing that. I loved it. But yeah, five stars, definitely. Um, this is the novella. I don't really know what to rate this. I feel, I feel like it was cute and I did actually like it. Like out of most novellas I have read, I really did like this novella. But obviously it's not a five star novella. I think I'm going to give this a... 3.5 it's nice and i like it but it's kind of forget forgetful like i forget that this is in series because it, it's it's, just, it's a novella so i'm not gonna rate it i'm not gonna rate it over five stars i usually don't read i usually don't rate books this short anything above uh three stars i usually either rate them at 3.5 or 3.75 i never really rate books this short of a four because i don't know you don't get much from these books like this book is literally only 200 pages long so you don't get much from it so 3.5 and as we know i'll be rating this a five stars i love this absolutely love this book i i, I love this i if i had to pick between my favorite being a cold war and i can't pick between a call of silver flames and aqua i love them both i just i don't think i'll be able to pick ever which one i like the most but especially i just i can't but yeah guys that's the end of this video long time in the making this took so long to make like two maybe three months to read the full series and to edit this and to get it out to you um but yeah loads of months many books months later we got this i will not be giving my rating for the first book because i didn't read that in this vlog i had already read the first book but um if you saw somewhere in this vlog i don't know if it's in part one or in part two but i did buy the black and white versions of this series because i'm definitely rereading the series at some point and annotating them fully which is if, if you know me you know that that's something i do with every single five star series and this is definitely a five star series just because not all the books are five stars, doesn't mean this is like a five star series. I'll be instantly buying the, the next book that comes out in a series. And I'll also be instantly reading all of Sarah Mass's books now. I'll definitely be reading Throne of Glass and then Crescent City. That's like not even negotiable. I will be doing that. But this book, since I read it long ago, I, I'm not 
gonna be rating it right now because I want to reread this series and obviously I will be doing a video of me rereading the first book and fully annotating it because I've already read this series but you didn't get my reaction to the first book so I'm gonna try and film my reaction while rereading it. I know it's not gonna be the same because it's not gonna be my reaction to f my, me first reading that but yeah I will be I'll be doing that at some point when I reread the reread this series I kind of just want to hop back into this series again because when I finished the last book I just like I don't know what to read anymore what what, what do I read I don't feel like anything is going to give me the same feeling that this series gave me and I know I felt that way when I read Harry Potter and then I also felt that way when I read the Shadowhunter series and then I found this and now I feel that way again I don't feel like anything's going to compare to this and I just feel like I just want to reread the series over and over again because why not but yeah that's it for this vlog reading vlog very long reading vlog i will see you guys all next time bye <laughs>